Hello replay viewers. It's been a while since I had something interesting to show you. But here we are. I was uh, put my head out the, uh, the back of my... I opened the hatch up the back of my boat yesterday morning and looked out and I saw this thing. Oh my goodness. What are they doing here? Like what, what is this? What is this little boat doing here? So uh, good morning everybody. I had to come over and, and I met a young couple. They not a young couple, young 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 man and a younger younger sister. And and they've walked off for a little bit, so I have, have permission to do a video when they're not, not around, they might come back. But they started out two weeks ago and in two weeks they've they've been able to travel for seven days in this open boat and and it's been awfully cold for a lot of that time. Hello Roddy. So so these these people are trying to go to Florida <clears throat> and in in 14 days they've made seven days of, of travel progress. Um, and you can see today today is not really very spectacular. We have a strong northeast wind. It's it's fairly uh, fairly sheltered in here. I wrote them a note saying well, oh, but Greg, I've given them a whole pile of... I gave them so much advice. I tend to give too much advice. And I gave so much advice that I knew it was too much. They wouldn't remember it. So then I went back and wrote, wrote it all down and, and then some extra stuff. Um, and then I handed him, him a note this morning. said, if there's too much wind, turn here and, and anchor. Um, they're going about 30 miles today. They can do about 6 miles an hour except they don't know how much current there's going to be coming in, so they might be doing five miles an hour, so that's a six-hour trip. And, and with the wind going one way and the current coming in, it might be rough. So, so that's why I left them a note saying, if it's too much, then, then stop and go in here. So what they can do is, is they have a little, um, let's see, about where does it stick out to. Uh, so right about here is where they can put up a canvas a piece of canvas. Yep. Well, there's snow coming for you, but just cold air for here. Um, so they can put a little little tent-like thing up over over this section. Uh, can anyone make a guess what their bed is? Do you, do you see their bed? I, I don't know how two people sleep on on one plank. Uh, but but that's their bed right there. Yes, they they sleep they slept in this overnight, and and the canvas is is packed up into one of these little bags, and the marina guys everyone everyone they meet knows that this is a pretty pretty brutal experience, so the marina guys gave them electric cords and a little electric heater, so they were warm last night. No, no, they're not pygmies. They're just using the full length of this plank. Uh, I really don't understand how two people can sleep on one plank. They, they do have uh, blow-up air mattresses. This whole thing sounds... I better look to see if they're coming. No, they're not coming. This whole thing sounds... It's, it's a very rough trip, obviously, uh, in terms of, of being, being in bad weather. They're here at the, the wrong time of the year, for sure. Uh, we did have a few warm days, but that was an exception to the rule, and now we're back to cold. So you can see they have their their uh, street map for for North Carolina. Well, guess what? We're now... No, it's not a street map. It actually is charts. We're no longer in North Carolina. This is South Carolina. So so that chart is, is going to be put away. Um, fortunately, the, the route is, is fairly obvious for the most part. They, uh, they have a GPS somewhere with a little chart on it. And I showed them how to look up charts on his phone, but it doesn't actually show you your dot where you are, so you can just use the charts as reference. So, so when they're going along, one person, this boat, this boat is kind of, when it's, it's moving, it's kind of high up in the air up here. So when they're moving, one person has to sit up here as, as ballast, and, and they try to keep their head below the edge so they're out of the wind. And, and here's where the other person is at the controls sitting on the plank or or standing. Uh, what I don't see is how do you steer this? Oh my goodness. So so behind this seat is an outboard motor. You kind of see the clamps for it. So if you're going to steer this outboard motor, you have to grab onto the handle to steer it that way. Yeah, that's nuts. Well, it's a little bit nuts. I, I do give them a lot of credit. 
for for trying. They they should have this this book came from New Hampshire. They should have brought it, and they're from New Jersey. They should have brought it farther south, and started where they didn't have such a long time in this weather. No, they they, they started in Bath, New, Bath, uh, North Carolina. Uh, running lights. That's a great question. Here's a pole, and it looks like they could clip. Hello, hello, good uh, morning. It looks like they could clip uh, running light. I'm not, say, I'm not saying lights, I'm saying light in the singular. I'm, I'm doing fine. They probably have a light that's white, which they, or maybe it's, it might be two or three colors, um, but they can, they can probably plug it up into that, that socket and it runs on batteries. Uh, but good gracious, uh, they have, I believe they have two batteries. There's one down there. And, and because he was talking about needing more, more ballast, so they want to buy lead to go up here to keep to help keep the bow down and to keep the uh, good morning good morning uptown. Uh, they were thinking about keeping uh, putting some lead up there to to help keep the bow down. I think the other yeah I see the other battery. The other battery is hiding underneath this this bed plank. And uh, you can see this uh, this ridge pole is how they how they they jam it in up at the bow and. And and make them put use the ridge pole as their tent. Am I interested? I'm not sure what the question is. Um, so they have a little. You can see they have a little camp stove. Uh, but you, do you do you see very much food on this boat? Like look look around. It you know, there's a cooler, which doesn't act. It's not going to be acting as a cooler. It's just as a storage thing now because it's cold. But but he said you're interesting. Oh merci. What is this? This is an open. I'm going to make a guess. This is an open dory. That we that was the type that was used. I'm backing up. I don't want to fall in the water. This is an open dory, the kind that was used for fishing uh, three or four hundred years ago in the ocean off of Boston and New England. So that's the style, and this is obviously a, a new a new version of that that old style. Uh, the original ones were were just for row, you just had rowing, there's no motors back in 1620. Um, they can, they do have a couple rowing stations. You can put pegs, you can put rowing pegs in here for the oars. You have something to, to pull against. No, they didn't build it, uh, uh, Scott. They, they bought this in New Hampshire. Here are the oars in case of, of, of dire emergency. They, they could row it, but it would be an awfully long, slow trip. Uh, you can see that I, I, I might be saying like I was telling them that they're going to go through <clears throat> through the, I think the one's coming down. They're gonna be going through Georgia and there's there's nothing in Georgia and say, oh how often how often do you get groceries? Do you have enough for like a week or two? And no, they have enough for three days of food. Uh, so they really depend on, on stopping every uh, quite frequently actually and, and resupplying. Come on walk into the shot I'm just doing my normal d dictation. Howdy. So here, here they are. Here are the two intrepid siblings hello. saying hello, good morning. They're about to set off in a minute. They've gotten their shower in. They've gotten their coffee cups. They're they're raring to go for for excitement and adventure to the next destination. I saw I saw a little smile there. <laughs> oh yeah. Yes, it is. It is windy up. Here. It is windy here. You wouldn't know it uh, to look around. You can barely see. The trees waving, um, but that's why I left them a little note saying, "If it's too much wind when you get to the open section, see he has the note. If there's too much wind when you get to the open section, there's an there's an escape route. Um, but the wind will be from behind, so so they might have an interesting time, but they'll be safe. This is a very strong boat, by the way. It's not going to sink. It it might get a little wet. Yes, yeah, a little laugh there. They've they've gotten splashed before. They've gotten salt water in their faces. So, so I, I had to come over and introduce myself yesterday when I saw this, this, this interesting uh, trip they're doing. Do they have an avionics app? No, they don't have a net. Do you have an avionics app? I'm, I'm getting questions from my viewers. Oh, uh, I don't think we do. He doesn't have an avionics app. You could think of investing a little money in, in that. In which one? Navionics. Okay. 
Wait, wait, I'm it's, it's, it's like it's like ten dollars, I think, because you have to buy some charts. How's this called? Nav. Oh, oh, it's just Navionics. Navionics. Okay, yeah, I know. That, that, you know, you have that little GPS somewhere. Yeah, I ordered that on Amazon. Yeah, it's great. The little Garmin. Yeah. Does it, it, show, it shows the charts? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah it has all the North American and Canadian charts. Mm -hmm. so, really? Yeah, I think we're, I think we're okay. You know? Yeah, you should be okay. In case we want to go And forward. And that, that active captain shows you Navionics charts. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm definitely going to be taking But it just, does, it just doesn't have the dot of where you are. Yeah, that's going to be part of my repertoire now. Stuff. It is good stuff. Yes, this is an outboard. He's trying to start the motor and I'm causing an interruption in departure procedures. You can hear it, you can hear it, maybe you can hear it revving up. So the outboard's underneath that, that center section. And they're about to shove off once it's warmed up a little bit. But you know what? They're, they're not wearing enough clothes. I, I feel like I should buy them two blankets just to wrap up in. My friend in Maine wishes you good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Do they sleep out in the open? Yes, they, well, they have a little tent they can put up. And this is, this is their bed. And they put use some inflatable mattresses. And, and I don't know how two people sleep on one plank. The other underneath. Someone, someone has to sleep sideways. Yeah, a little bit. Is that you? Yeah. Being the short person. How does your head like? Um, are you, are, are you kind of shaped like this? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Or, or more like, more like. <laughs> there, there's plenty of room to stretch out. Good for you. That's how we. That's what we look like when we're getting into the tent, though. Yes, yeah. squishing, squishing oh, yeah. under. Yeah, that's yeah, not the greatest. No. Well, but we can stretch out. It's, uh, it's good enough for that. Yeah. Did you start out? I'm not sure. What do you mean? Did they start out? They, yes, they started out this way. What you see is what you get. Yeah. yeah. I, I have a good set of viewers. They like. No, there's no reason to wear life jackets. Oh yeah. They they can. Will you put one on? Oh, you want to put one on? No, 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 no. They don't have any reason to wear one. Oh. It's not rough here. <laughs> this this is this is calm. They're going to be going through uh, through the trees for quite a while, and then they'll get into open water. These boats are, are, they start, no, they live in New Jersey. They're from New Jersey. They started in Bath, North Carolina, 14 days ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would put on my one thing. Put on everything you have. Yeah. <laughs> and then some. Oh, yeah. Well, yes, this is Osprey Marina. Um, I don't wear a life jacket because I'm in a, in a boat that I'm not going to fall out of. And I don't think they're going to fall out of this boat either. You know, to, to fall out... Well, see, that, that's a question I'm not going to ask about. Yeah. No, we haven't... We haven't no, no, you, I, it's the one I haven't mentioned. Someone's asking about the bathroom. Oh, um... Yeah. That's the short, question... Short hops. <laughs> short hops. Or short hops to the shore. I, I'm going to assume <laughs> there's a bucket involved, but we don't there's talk about... But, but we don't talk about buckets and shovels. <laughs> Yeah, no, that doesn't happen here. That not does, in federal waters. No, not in federal waters. No, yeah. no sir. <laughs> now, now what, what I didn't tell you yesterday is Outward Bound uses boats like this, just slightly bigger in Maine. Yeah, they still do? Oh, they still do. Yeah. Um, I mean, they were originally... They, they, they sleep 10 or 12. Yeah. And there's nothing there either. Yeah. Except, the, except over the side. Yeah. Yeesh. Not going to do that. Hopefully. Certain things we don't discuss. <laughs> There's a, there's a guy over here saying it's chilly out. Now put on my main accent. Oh yeah, it's, it's chilly out. These young whippersnappers are gonna go have some adventures in the cold. Hopefully they don't see any ice when they get farther along. But this is so cool. I, these are the, the two coolest people I've met so far here. What an adventure. Prepare to cast off. Yeah. That's why I'm standing where I'm standing. See, I'm standing standing here. Let me see. Okay, so the wind's coming from over there. So we probably 
probably want to do. Take a dip. No, Take a dip and. Yeah. The key to not being nervous when you're pulling out in a boat is to be good at what you're doing. Don't hit my boat. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're not good at what you're doing, well, well, that's why we practiced. Yep, so they're about to back up. There's only two more lines and they're off to the next stop. This boat is very hard to control because it doesn't have any anything underwater as a keel. So if there's any breeze, it just gets blown sideways. Yep. yep. So it's very hard to maneuver except straight ahead. Yeah. Even then. Even even then, even then, even then it, it goes it goes it goes a little crooked. So we're gonna find out what happens at a little Bad driving. <laughs> clear the wind. Everybody's wishing you bon voyage. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, I have 15 live viewers, oh, wow. and oh, wow. and there'll be a lot of replay viewers later. Yeah, we're up famous today. I'm, I'm a little early for my for my. Uh, <laughs> say say hi to Gillian. Hey Gillian. <laughs> Gillian, hello. Nice to meet you. Kind of. No, they don't have a YouTube channel. I wish they did, oh. but Maybe but by the end of this trip. but but they have you know if they did, there's no electricity here to edit. You know they'd have to run their laptop for so long it drained their little battery. Yeah. Yeah. Happy holidays and safe travels from Maine again. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's make sure we get in here without, without butchering this job. Yeah, you're on under under. <laughs> you know you have, have uh, fifty. Yeah, you have such pressure. <laughs> You have 15 people, well 14, one dropped out. <laughs> what, what good sports though. <laughs> Hit it. <laughs> not, not crash it. <laughs> but, but see, so you're doing the right thing. They're just barely missing this guy. And the wind will catch them a little bit. Yeah, see here's, here's the, uh, the cheap bow thruster. Just requires uh, rice and hamburgers. Whatever works. Yep. Look. Oh wait, wait. Uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got the help. I got the push, the push off. Couldn't have done it without your help. <laughs> yeah, well, you're fine. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye bye. Nice to meet you. All right, folks. That's the end of this little video. It's off they go. Um, they're gonna have a good, pretty good trip today for the first. Uh, first 20 miles then they get to an open section and it might be uh, I'm gonna flip you all sideways then they're gonna get to an open section and hopefully they get through that all right they don't know it yet but the the current's gonna be uh, gonna be somewhat unfavorable and and see here's the uh, for ballast the uh, the person that's not running the boat usually is up in the front to keep the bow down but look at that little thing doesn't that look kind of <laughs> kind of tippy? The, by, the you're welcome. By the way, the name of this boat is Cod. It's yeah. a great, great name. Love so, to meet you. all right, take care. So off they go, and that's the end of the scope. This was this is one of my coolest scopes. Who would ever think? They go seven miles an hour, um, and they don't use too much fuel. Yeah, well, you know, taking a 32-foot boat across the Atlantic, if it's strong enough, you can do it. This is just the very much the wrong time of the year. It's, it's, it's like four weeks, two or three weeks too late because it's so cold now. So off they go. That's the end of the scope. And, and I wish them the best. They're going to have quite a trip. Um, <laughs> they're, they're super nice, too. So everyone take care. And we'll see you next time.